Here's something you may or may not know as an investor or a landlord. So in BC, when you form an agreement with a tenant as a landlord, both of you will sign an agreement naming the tenants on the agreement. Those are the people that are your tenants that you have a direct relationship with. These are also the tenants that are on the agreement that is governed by the Residential Tenancy Act. Now there's some certain types of room sharing, subletting, um, living arrangements that are not covered by the Residential Tenancy Act. For instance, if you rent your home to Jim and Joan and they decide to take off for six months and they decide to rent their home to Sean and Susie as a sublet, you have no contractual relationship with Sean and Susie. Your only contractual relationship is with Jim and Joan. So if something happens, if uh, Sean and Susie start destroying the home or they're doing something illegal in the home, um, your beef is not directly with them. Your beef is going to be to end the tenancy with your uh, original Jim and Joan tenants because they are the ones named on the agreement. Now, same thing if Jim and Joan decided to stay in the home and they brought in a roommate. Well, again, you have no uh, contractual relationship with that roommate. If something happens where um, Jim and Joan end the tenancy or you end the tenancy, um, that all falls under the Residential Tenancy Act, but there is no obligation to have the roommate stay on. Um, there, is, there is nothing there in the Residential Tenancy Act. So you have to know that as a roommate or somebody subletting as you go in as well. There is recourse if a landlord is doing something that is unethical. Um, you know, you do you can apply to the courts, but just know that if you are a sublet or a room share, whether it's a landlord or a tenant here that's watching, uh, you you do not fall under the Residential Tenancy Act.